our worship service today. We're having a little prayer and praise this morning. It's wonderful to have you all here. And to everybody else who is a dad today, a very happy Father's Day to you. And to anybody who is uh, celebrating with a father today, wish them a happy Father's Day on our behalf. We're holding them in prayer today. And Nans, uh, well not Pops, I was about to say Nans and Pops too, but Pops, <laughs> stick to the grandfathers. Even though Nans are doing probably a lot of their lion's share of work today too. <laughs> I, I still am probably going to wind up cooking, <laughs> so there's that. That's okay. Uh, it's wonderful to be here. We're going to sing a bunch of hymns. We're going to pray a lot as well. And uh, everything you need is in our bulletin today, except the psalm. You'll need your green book for that. And uh, also all the songs are in our song book today that we'll be using. So with all that in mind, speaking of the song book, pull that out first. Because we're going to sing number two in your song book, Alive, alive, alive for the morning. Shouldn't be like it for Matt's time. Amen. 
I just noticed you didn't have a bulletin. I gotta get you one. <laughs> no bad. So while we wait for a bulletin to go, oh, gosh, she's quick. Good. <laughs> all on top of it. We're all good. Thank you. I'm sneaking a hymn in. <laughs> so before you get any further with the readings, we're gonna have another hymn. I'm sneaking one in. It's number 94. I've got a mansion on the hilltop. So number 94 in your song book. Or just over the hilltop. You know where the mansion is. <laughs>
first reading today is taken from the first book of Samuel. <clears throat> now, the Philistines gathered their armies for battle, and they were gathered, gathered at Soko, which belongs to Judah, and encamped between Soko and Ezekah in Ephrastan. There came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Goth, whose height was six cubits and a span. He had a helmet of bronze on his head. He was armored with a coat of mail. The weight was about 5,000 shekels of bronze. He had greaves of bronze on his legs. A javelin of bronze swung between his shoulders. The shaft of the spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear head was weighed about 600 shekels of iron. And the shield-bearer went before him. And he stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself, and let him come down to me. And if he is able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, Today I defy the ranks of Israel. Give me a man, that we may fight together. And when Saul and all of Israel heard these words of, of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now Saul and they, that is all men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. David rose early that morning, left someone in charge of his sheep, took provisions, and went as his father Jesse had commanded him. He came to the encampment as the army was going forth to the battle line, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines drew up for battle, army against army. David left the things in charge of the keeper of the baggage and ran to the ranks and went and greeted his brothers. As he talked with them, the champion Philistine of Goth, Goliath by name, came out of the ranks again from the Philistines and spoke the same words as before. But this time, David heard him. And David said to King Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. Now Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine and to fight him. You're just a boy, and you're, you're, you, he has been a warrior since his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep with his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came, he took the lamb from the flock and took the lamb from the flock. I went after it. I struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be one like them, since he has defied the armies, armies of the living God. But David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put his bronze iron helmet on the head and clothed him with his coat of mail. David strapped on a sword over the armor and tried in vain to walk, but he wasn't used to him. And then David said to Saul, I can't walk with these. I'm not used to them. So David took them off. He took but a staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in his pouch. And he had his sling in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. Now the Philistine Goliath came on, and he drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. And Goliath said to David, Am I a dog that you would come at me with stakes? And the Philistine cursed David by all of his own gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me then. And I will give flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of this Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear. 
for the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into your uh, give you into my hand. So the Philistine Goliath drew nearer to meet David, and as he did, David ran quickly to the battle line to meet him. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it with his sling, and struck the Philistine right on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and Goliath fell face down. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm chapter 9, verses 9 to 20, is found in, in your book 713, page 713 in the book. Psalm 9. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name are not trust in you. Remember to save those who seek you. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Protect, proclaim to the peoples the things he has done. The avenger of God will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O Lord. See the misery I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gates of death. So that I may tell your praises and rejoice in your salvation in the gates of the city of Zion. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the snare they set as their own foot cut. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over to the grave, and also all the peoples that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Put fear upon them, Lord. Let the ungodly know that they are but mortal. And we say a prayer together. Righteous, Righteous judge, judge, hear the cries of your people. Rescue, rescue them, them from the hands of their oppressors. Save them, them from the gates of death. That we may all wish to rejoice in your help. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Amen. Defender. Amen. Amen. Our second reading is a, let, is a reading from Paul, second letter to Corinthians, chapter 6, 1 to 13. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and, a day of, and on, on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of my salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our minister. But as servants of God, we have committed ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge of patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in all repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet as well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful 
yet always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich as has had nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affection, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our next hymn is number 149, Till the Storm Passes By. Stand at your right.
And then a great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he said, but he, Jesus, was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. They woke him suddenly and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke up, and he rebuked the wind, and he said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. And Jesus said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And, when they, and they were filled with great awe, and they said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of Christ. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. All right, everybody grab a seat. <clears throat> there is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. I will speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also. When Paul was speaking to the Corinthians, he was trying to reassure them. This is towards the end of his second letter, after he was explaining a whole mess of stuff of what they had to understand from his previous letter. And the only drawback is that we have no idea what came before. I would love to read the letters he received for him to provide this reply, and <laughs> both times. But in this case, he was reassuring them that no matter what, the love that he had for the people he was speaking to, that he preached to, that he taught, and he and Timothy, because Timothy was a part of writing this letter too, that they were there for them. They were always there to back them up, to give them courage, to support them in everything they do. And this is a really good letter to have for this weekend, because for the most part, and I'm not trying to be funny when I say that, but genuinely, this is Father's Day weekend most, in most places. And in almost every circumstance, there is somebody always behind us, supporting us, and lifting us up, whether quietly or whether out loud and proud. Because there are a lot of different kinds of dads, too. There are the quiet ones, who, they're there, they're supporting, but you might see them behind your newspaper <laughs> sometimes. And then there are the other ones who were like me, with the camcorder, shouting at the side of the lines of the soccer ball field, waiting for somebody to score a goal, and I don't care if he does. <laughs> Just, go on, go! <laughs> yeah. Nice and embarrassing, right? And that's, that's the kind of dad I'd like to be anyway, sometimes. But as part of a lot of the readings this weekend, we hear the term and the theme of providing confidence. And this is another appropriate theme for this weekend because this is the weekend where a lot of folks are getting ready for grads, where they had their grads, or you guys told me, what is it, Thursday? Thursday. And you're, and you're done. And then it's summer. Then what happens? Vacation, sure. But then you get to count the days until you go back in September all over again. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> That's the most exciting part of the summer, just to count the days until you go back. <laughs> but, <laughs> but a lot of our grads this weekend were very proud of them. And you see a lot of parents who are. And you can see the culmination of all the things that they've accomplished. In Lewisport, for example, I can think of two right off the top of my head, Aiden and Lucas, who are two of our servers who have been with us a long time. And they are, we have a lot of good servers, but they're graduating at this time. And they successfully got scholarships, which show that they have a lot of potential in the abilities they have. It shows that they are confident in the abilities they got. And a lot of that confidence isn't just by themselves, but is provided by those behind them, by moms and dads who have brought them up and given them the encouragement they need, teachers and other parental figures that you have. And in the midst of all that, we also have other kids who have uh, kids, listen to me, Amber is no kid, she's married now, but we also have an ordinand in our congregation over uh, in the part of our parish who is just waiting now. She's been married now a couple of weeks back, and now she's just waiting to be put into a parish because she's graduated and finished seminary. And all from support from those around her. That wasn't just support from family. I was the church family, too. It's an enormous thing to have that support. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. 
sometimes even with the most robust amount of support, people can still not be certain of their abilities. People can still have doubts, and people can still be questioning sometimes what they can do and who they can be. I did. That's no fault of mom and dad who are here. <laughs> it's not their fault, but sometimes you sit there and you wonder, well, what can I do? You sit and wonder, am I able to do those things? Am I supposed to? Because you don't know sometimes, guys. I'm just going to speak to you guys specifically. Sometimes there are stuff that you know you can do. Like, what's, what's something the two of you are really good at? Name something. Just one thing. One little thing. What's something you're really good at that you like? Playing video games. Say again? Playing video games. Playing video games. All right. In this day and age, that's almost a skill. <laughs> no, so that's not bad. They're getting harder and harder to play, so all right. But that's something you enjoy and you think you're good at. That might turn into a career in computer engineering when you design your own. What about you? What's something that you enjoy in school or that you do? Say again. Riding a bike. Without training? Without training, because training. Training. she's really good at it. Congratulations. I can't do that yet. <laughs> I'm not being... There you go, I'm laying it all out there now, boss. <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't ride a bike to save my life. I would fall down a bunch. So congratulations. That is a wonderful thing to be able to do. And that's something that will serve you good later on. But there it is. You have to have a lot of trust in yourself and in that bike to be able to do that. You have to have confidence in what you can do. In our readings today, we have an example of exactly that. In that big, long reading I read right at the beginning, we have more of the story of David, the shepherd boy, who wished to be king, but not yet. And he, the king of Israel at the time wasn't sure that he could beat this big fella. You guys have heard the term Goliath before, I'm sure, and if you haven't, it might have come up in a story before. Most people, when they hear the term Goliath, it means big. And if you read the reading, it says he's so many cubits big and so many this, so many that. I could tell you what that actually was, but it makes no odds. Just know he was a big lad, and he was carrying a lot of heavy stuff, and he was a trained soldier since childhood. So since he was your age, he would learn how to fight people. Now listen, when I was your age and I got into fights, my dad told me something very simple. You don't always have to fight. That was the most important. <laughs> you know, he said that sometimes that's not the best way to do things. But sometimes, even when I was young, I knew when my friends were being picked on, it wasn't right. And I was a big lad, too, when I was younger. I was bigger than some of my friends, and when they got into a scrape, that's what would happen. I'd step between them and another kid, and I'd wind up hurt, but so would they, because I was a big kid. <laughs> and there were a few times that wasn't exactly the best thing to do, and I know that now. But a lot of that comes down to sometimes you have to make a decision to help. I'm not saying you guys got to go get in the fights. Please don't. <laughs> but as a big fella, that sometimes happens. And here comes Goliath. And he's picking a fight with everybody. That's all he's ever known. And everybody on the other side, the side that God was with, Israel's people, were frightened, terrified. Even the king, who was supposed to be this big bully of a man, comes out, sees Goliath, and says, Yeah, we're going to go back for a little while and think about this. <laughs> like, he wouldn't even go out on the field to take him on. Now, David, which you're about 10, 11, 25, what is it? Eight. Eight. Okay, well, he was 10. <laughs> Let's say that. He was a young lad. He wasn't a teenager yet. But he was young. And he came out on the field, and here he was, just a young shepherd boy, and he, all he came with was a bag over one hand, a stick in his hand from being a shepherd, and he picked up five rocks. Because if you guys know what a slingshot is, well, this wasn't even a slingshot with an elastic. This was a sling like this. You had to do it this way, and then you let it go. <laughs> like that. So you had to be really good. You couldn't even aim it. You had to know when to let it go. And so that it would go off. And that's all he had with him. And when he came to the front lines, he had the confidence in him that God was with him. That he had the support, not just of his family, with David and all of his brothers were there. Because he had like seven or eight brothers. But David's father, Jesse, supported him. He trusted him. He left him alone with the sheep to look after them. Then on top of that, he had all these brothers who were big strapping lads. And they were terrified too. But they supported them too. And he had the confidence to know that in his abilities and what he could do, whether it was riding a bike, whether it was being good at games, or whether it was... What am I good at? I can sing. <laughs> I guess I can sing. But knowing what he could do as a shepherd... 
He had the confidence behind him that I know what I can do. I've taken down lions and bears, and not by myself, but because God worked through me by the things that I could do. And I am confident in what I can do. So, he steps up to the plate and says, I can do this. And the king, who was terrified, the big bully of a man, sent him. He said, go on then. Probably thinking, this will, talk, this will solve all my problems now. This competitor for my crown, he'll be dead. <laughs> But he goes out, and he says even to this big bully of a man, I have the confidence in what I can do and God behind me, and I know that I can accomplish this. He couldn't even do it dressed as a soldier like the big fella. He said to the king, I can't wear this. You heard me say it. He didn't have a sword. He, a shepherd doesn't use a sword. A shepherd doesn't wear armor. A shepherd doesn't wear a big helmet. You'd be lucky if they got a pair of sandals. And that's just to keep the rocks out of their feet. And he still went to the front lines to face this down. And as the story goes, he did take him down with one round. Now don't get me wrong, when this story was written a long time ago, it was written by three or four different churches kind of mished together, and they really played up this story good. Maybe he might have had a little chain mail or something on just to keep him safe, like a helmet when you're riding your bike, maybe. But you know what? He didn't need it. And that's something that a lot of people need to recognize, is that even when you are concerned with your own abilities, that confidence, that trust that you have in what you are able to do, what you enjoy doing, God can work with that. Sometimes the only things that will get in our way are when we doubt. And that takes us to the boat. Because later on in that short reading I read at the end, Jesus is on a boat with his friends. And they were going across the way, and a storm rose up, and they were frightened again. My goodness, there's something about the folks getting frightened whenever God's around. <laughs> But they were scared to death, and Jesus woke up as if nothing was wrong, said, knock it off to the wind and the rain and the storm and everything else, and it stopped. And he turned around and he said, basically, he said, did you really think I'd let anything happen to you? How can you not trust? But you know what? Sometimes, guys, we can get in moments where we're afraid, where we don't trust, and it's because we're not sure. Growing up, I had moments where I might have doubted what I could and can't do. But it was through the encouragement of people around me, in my church family, in my own family, in <coughs> that I found the ability to do what I do now. Even when I get nervous, I'm never so nervous that I can't do what I do. And that's the encouragement we need. That's what our graduates need to hear. That's what you guys need to hear. That's what we all need to hear. Even when moments come up that we're uncertain about, that we're frightened of, that we don't think we're good enough for to have confidence enough in who we are, not to dress up as something we're not like Saul wanted David to do, because he wasn't a soldier, but to know who we are, and to have confidence in what we can do, and to have those people behind us encourage us again. Because God can do a wonderful thing in all that we can do, if we trust enough in ourselves, and then in Him. That's something I want you guys to take away as you go, as you get out of school this week, just because you're going running off, riding your bike, and playing video games, well, guess what? Most of the summer, that's plenty. <laughs> you get big nods in the head there. <laughs> but whatever it is you choose to do as you relax, never forget that when you get back to school, there are still things to be done to learn and be comfortable and strong in learning those things. So that even like our graduates, Aiden, and Lucas, and Amber, all of them have the confidence and strength and support to do excellent. And they're going on to do greater things. And you guys could be blessed the same. So could we all. So take that with you today. And good luck as you go on your summer holidays. I, I'm taking my summer holidays soon, too. <laughs> but only for a little while. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, as you spoke your servant Paul to those who were uncertain as what the church should be, as you spoke to your servant David to provide for him in the skills and the ways that he could provide for those around him and to protect and serve you, and as you spoke through your son to those who were afraid in the midst of the storm to reassure them that you are never far away, continue to reassure all of our graduates, all of our children, everyone who we can teach and help to guide that they may know not just our reassurance and our encouragement,
but that which you provide as well. That which only you can provide above all else through the love that we share and through the encouragement we can give as you have given to us. Help us in the midst of any storm to have confidence not only in ourselves, but in you. In your name we pray. Now, I almost planned this. Our next song is number 50, God Will Take Care of You. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you like, you can stay seated for this hymn, or you can stand. Standing makes it easier to sing, though. It opens up your chest. <laughs> so if you'd like to stand, you can. Or if you'd like to sit, sit up straight. But we're going to sing number 50 together.
third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We're going to share in our time of prayer, and you may sit or kneel as we pray these uh, prayers together. <clears throat> in our Anglican cycle of prayer today, we pray for the Church of North India, United, and their Most Reverend Dr. Prem Chand Singh, and they're the, that's the moderator and Bishop of Jalapur. We also pray locally in our provincial prayer care for the Diocese of Western Newfoundland, our neighbors to the west, and for Bishop John Organ. We also pray in our tridiocesan cycle of prayer for the parish of Elamore, Fox Roost, and Marguerite. And we pray for their priests in charge, the Reverend Nathan Cutler, and, all, and the dear, their deacons, the Reverend Isabel Cutler and John Ballard. And we pray for all the churches under their care. And we also pray for the parish of Pasadena Cormac, and their priests in charge, the Reverend Amy Richter, and the Reverend Joseph Pat Pagano, sorry if I'm mispronouncing, and the churches under their care. And as always, we pray for our companion diocese of Pocan, South Sudan, Bishop Francis and all the clergy in his diocese. And as always, we pray as well for our ACW prayer partner, Reverend Brian Parker in Killarney, Manitoba, and for his family at this time. In our prayers today, for the fourth Sunday of Pentecost, uh, the response is, O oh God, hear our prayer. As we find ourselves in a storm-tossed world, let us gather our needs and concerns to call upon our God, saying, O oh God, hear our prayer. As the raging storm compelled the apostles to wake your Son, help us, O oh God, to weather the squalls that wake us to your presence. Let us pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. As your Son bound the fury of the sea with his word, teach us to bind together science and technology with human dignity to make a better life for all people. Let us pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. As Christ Jesus calmed the storm for the disciples' journey, calm whatever storms we encounter in our travels and bring us home safely. Let us pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. And as including not only in the journeys that we have, but in the journeys that we have in our lives, we continue to pray for all of the students that have graduated recently, those who are continuing their studies, and those who are beginning their journey far from home, whether it be to secondary places of education or colleges or universities, bring them home safely from time to time. But Lord, wherever they go, be with them and give them the same confidence you gave to David before Goliath. Let us pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. As Jesus once stilled the waves which buffeted the boat, quiet the rifts in our lives and in the lives of all those who struggle today those who struggle with sickness, with suffering, with hospital treatments, or as they are in hospital care, and any that we name today either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. We remember especially today all those that we list as part of our uh, Facebook page and those we remember in prayer and those who we list along with this video today. Lisa Hayward. And those known to you alone, O Lord, let us pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. As children delight in the world through the encouragement of their parents, help us to encourage one another to give thanks and praise to you for the wonders of creation. Let us pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. And as we are thankful for the fathers in our world this weekend who give and who emulate you in encouragement, in safety, and in structure, and in health, we pray that those who are missing their fathers at this time, whether they have gone ahead of us into your kingdom or whether they are far off, that they may know the love that comes from your fatherly presence as well as theirs. Let us pray. O oh God, hear our prayer. We say together. Caring God, we thank you for being with us through the fury and the calm of our life's voyage, revealing your care to us and drawing us to new life. May we live as we pray in the protection of Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we're going to have our offering <coughs> hymn. Now, of course, everybody put their offering in the plate.
in the back, but we are going to bring it forward at the end of this hymn. And another thing I'm going to ask, oh, where'd he go? Oh, he's there, okay. I'm going to ask you to, this is the time, because I almost forgot. Remember that thing I asked you to do? Here, come up, you're going to help me do it. While we're singing this hymn, our two little assistants are going to dole out to any father who's here, or anybody who has uh, a father, or perhaps a father who may be at home enjoying Father's Day, whatever. <laughs> We have bookmarks for them to keep with a little verse on it for them. So I'm going to ask them to go around and make sure everybody gets one who needs one. And then you guys can take one for yourselves as well. So I'm going to say, you're going to do this side. And if you could do, well actually, you know what, go around together. Help each other, okay? That might be helpful. So you can come on up and get that. As we sing number 93, Love Lifted Me.
Didn't even think of that. What about your pop? Pops. You got pop. <laughs> All right. No, right here is fine. Good judge. All right. The prayer over our gifts today, as we give thanks for that which we give and that which folks might have given in ahead of time, we pray today found in our beloved. We say together, Eternal God, you have made our Savior Jesus Christ the head of all creation. Receive all we offer you this day, and renew us in his risen life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rescue your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us from all unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Grab a seat for a sec. I suppose I should go up there. <laughs> Make it look professional. And, then, and yes, while I'm up here, I'm far enough away I can take this off for a minute. <laughs> So, once again, thank you all for being here this morning, and again, to anybody to whom this applies, a very happy Father's Day to you. Or if you're not here this morning, pass it along, because I'm sure there's a few dads who you could pass it along to. And thank you again, guys, for pass speaking of passing things along, for passing out the bookmarks. For those of you who didn't get one, there'll be a couple left here there in the back of church for next week. So if you missed out, you might be able to get one. I got four. That's all that's left. <laughs> but they're little ties. I might as well show you little bookmarks like ties, and, the sh and it says on them, a righteous man who walks in integrity, how blessed are his children after him. And that's a verse from 20th Proverb, number 7. Verse 7. <laughs> so there you go. Um, as well, just a couple little announcements to get to catch you up on. Of course, our Bible study is still on summer hiatus. But also, to anybody who might have popped by at Lewisport yesterday, thank you for all your support. They had their sale, their fall sale, oh, I'm sorry, their fall sale, listen to me, hang on. Hang on, I'm obviously overheated. <laughs> they had their yard sale yesterday, and it went well. And as a matter of fact, I don't mind saying to anybody, because I'm sharing this, of course, online as well, they raised, at the moment, 2,800 bucks, which is lovely. <laughs> and that's going to be very helpful. And as well, uh, that includes the hot dogs that I cook, that I slaved over a barbecue <laughs> to cook. <laughs> and apparently, as someone said, they were delicious, but they're also the best lunch in town because of cheap. <laughs> dollar a dog, dollar a drink, you might as well. <laughs> so that was all right. And as well, it was nice that our bake sale was wonderful as well. And everybody who volunteered to help out with that, and all of you who came, thank you so much. And not to oversell it, but just a little reminder, if you missed out, and you might have, we're doing it again this Saturday because we still got some things left to get rid of. <laughs> we got some things, big ticket items too, and we also have some folks who still had some things to drop off to. So if you missed this past Saturday, come on out this next Saturday. You're welcome to do so. 10 o'clock Saturday coming, and you're welcome to do so. So there you go too. Uh, and of course, birthdays, anniversaries, celebrations, anything. What's on the go, boss? Don't be shy. I know my father-in-law's birthday is Monday. So, Wayne, if you're watching, I remember. <laughs> Happy birthday to him. Uh, anybody else? 
Wedding anniversary, birthday, nothing? You're all shy? I want to be shy. Oh, I guess you. <laughs> Ivy usually has a phone. Now, in her defense, she had like 17 last week, so gee, I don't know. But, uh, no? Okay, well, that's all right then. We'll try again next week. But for now, one celebration we'll all celebrate is the fact that, again, a happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. And aside from that, just a reminder, next week we have Holy Communion in the afternoon, and then we'll be having our July and August uh, schedule, which will revert to our summer hours, for lack of a better word. So every second week, just to give you all, because I know you want, there's things we got to do, so just a reminder of that as well. But the next schedule will be out soon. So with all that in mind, and unless there's anything else we need to announce, okay, we're going to have our closing hymn now as we give thanks. And before I go, okay, one little celebration. Give thanks to this man. <laughs> give thanks to Wince. He did a lovely job today. Singing and playing and everything else. And uh, I'm happy to sing with him too, so that's always fun. And also nice to have you all sing with us too. I even said, my dad is here, he's a good singer, so he'll be all right. <laughs> it's like having me in stereo. <laughs> so that's nice. So we're going to sing as we are thankful for everything this weekend. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me, number 128. <clears throat> and for the record, my mom's in the choir, was in the choir too, so she sang. <laughs>